Hi, I'm Garrett Town with AM Solar, and today we're working on an Airstream. We've got a monster 600 amp hour battery bank in here with a 3000 inverter, and um, we're getting ready to route solar cable, which is it seems intimidating but it's actually one of the easiest rigs to route solar cable on and Kyle here is gonna show us how it's done so Kyle I believe you follow the uh, measure once drill twice approach when you install these oh, so <laughs> let's uh, uh, show us show us what's your what's your game plan here all right so we're gonna be doing this very discreet so you don't see any cables or loom we're gonna go in the corner right here on the outside of the rivet and for that reason we have ducting going through the ceiling right here for the AC. So you've got this line of rivets right here and right. you do not want to drill anywhere this side of that line. Yeah. And all airstreams or most airstreams have a situation where they've got like some little cabinet area yeah. next to the bed where you're keeping the batteries and uh, it's just really easy. So you're, yeah. you're just going to punch a little pilot hole up there. What yeah. size drill bit do you like to use? So this well, is that's a long one. bit right here. We're going to use that to full send just through the first layer and we're going to give it a little tap which will put a little dimple on the roof. So we'll go up there and investigate and make sure our C box is going to fit properly up there. So you make the hole through the bottom. You do not punch it through the roof. You just leave a little dent just to tap. give it a sanity check. Like yep. if uh, if you did screw up, you'd have to duct tape it or something, yeah. but no, uh, you, you just want to make sure you're not poking any unnecessary holes yeah. in the roof. That's okay, the so uh, let's drill this hole. The moment of truth. <laughs> Layer. So we just kind of creep up till we feel it touch the roof right there. And then we'll just give it a little tap. And that'll put a little dimple up there. Okay. And bring the camera in there so you can see the clearance that you have from the different, um, let me put a light on that, from the edges. So it's like you, you got about an inch on either yeah, side. For this application will be using 6.2 for a gauge of wire and cable. So that gives us enough room to safely come through. Okay, so you're going to have the 6.2 come down through that hole. It's going to go inside this edge here. It's going to punch through right here Correct. and then head back along the wall and then back behind the water heater down along there and then into the battery area from there. Okay, let's go look at the roof. Okay, if you look very closely, you can see right there, that is where the drill bit popped up. And you'll notice that there's plenty of clearance for installing our combiner box here. It's not gonna be bumping into the air conditioner. There's nothing else in the area. And prior to drilling that hole, Kyle uh, came up here and gave it a sanity check to make sure that there was nothing in the way. So now that he sees that hole, he's going to finish drilling it. Let's watch it pop out. I, that's not where I was expecting it to be. <laughs> okay, but that works too. So he's through and now he's gonna pull his bit out. I thought it was there, but okay. Kyle has a better eye for this. He does this more often than I do. Perfect. All right, so with the six gauge duplex, we use a hole saw about this size and we drill into this pilot hole. We use the hole saw to just take off this first layer. We peel it back, we look, is there any wires in there, anything important like backup camera wires, air conditioner wires, anything like that? If there is, we have to shove them to the side. It's very rare that we see that. And if there isn't, then we just keep going layer by layer. So in this instance, we happen to come across the support beam. Luckily, it's pretty wide from this region. 
So we're just going through a little section of it. If you're not comfortable with going through that, since your combiner box is a little bit bigger, you can always decide to maybe dog foot it. And that's where you'd basically start a new hole here, which will go and add 45 to your hole in the cabinet. In this application, we will go through. Just like that. Double check, make sure we have no cables, wires, ducting. We are clear. So, real slow, even though we know we have a clear route of cables, wires, and fun stuff. We're still gonna go nice and slow for a clean cut. So now we're gonna install the snap bushing. It's a little piece of plastic basically to ensure that your cable doesn't get cut through from the sharp metal that we created. So this is a three quarter. We know that it fits our cable. And what I like to do is flare out these just a little bit. So you get a nice snap around the circumference. So. so now that we have our snap bushing in place, nice and tight, we're gonna go and feed our cable through up to the roof. How much do you have to feed it? I normally like to do about 12 inches and then we'll go up to the roof and secure it for the placement of the sea box. So now that we have our cable coming up to our roof access, we're gonna find our placement for our sea box and do a dry fit for this application. This is the nose of the Airstream, so we're gonna attempt to have this in the back. Just a little more resistance from water getting in there even though we seal it nice. So we'll have it right about there. So we'll start by cleaning our roof from any debris and dirt. Kyle, have you ever seen a roof or a sea box come unmounted before? I have never. Never. So this is tried and true. Tried and true. You can never over clean your surface. For sealing the sea box, we'll be using our white Sikaflex. Start by peeling our 3M tape off the back. And we recommend Sikaflex instead of Dicor on the Airstream roofs? For Airstream roofs, yes. Um, for fiberglass and rubber roofs, we typically will actually screw it down because it's more porous and the rubber is a little more flexy. So we'll actually screw it and then seal it. For this kind of surface, it's very adhesive to this 3M. We can rely on that and the Sikaflex. So now we have our 3M off. Do a generous bead around the edges. around our solar run.
flip it over. Heat it on. Find your placement. Even. And then just apply a generous pressure until it squeezes out from all edges. Yeah, we're just sealing it right to the edge. This prevents any water from seeping underneath it. Which preparing the actual wiring on the bus bars and potentially your insulation and room tour. And you wouldn't want to do this until you already popped out how many circles yeah, you need. Yeah, it, it makes it a little more difficult to feel pop out your holes after. Not impossible, but... Take some forethought. All right, we'll let that cure and make sure there no air bubbles come out and pop. If so, we'll put another layer on and smooth it out. How long does it need to cure? Sinkaplex in a moderate temperature cures within an hour to the touch. Okay. Hotter temperatures, it stays a little runny. So maybe five hours to be on. Now we take our putty tape and we'll roll it up, which softens it up a little bit. And this will basically create another barrier between the hole and the interior shell and also keeping the cables safe from any sharp edges. And pack it in there pretty generously. This will stay soft, but oh, okay. we'll end up using a self-leveling die core, and then we'll fill this reservoir inside here, and that's going to make a complete nice seal, watertight, airtight. Welcome back. Now that we have our combiner box, our bus bars, and our solar run all sealed up, we're going to go ahead and connect it to our negative and positive by splitting your cable. which is located in the center of these two bus bars. They're a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna loosen that up all the way. But first we'll just get the angle on it. Up there. Go and snip off the excess. Carefully strip back a, sh a little bit of sheathing. It's about three quarters of an inch. cable in, trying to keep all the cable from fraying out. A nice clean connection. And hold in place and tighten back down really snug. Now 
do the exact same thing for positively.